Hey y'all, hey, hey, hey. It's Kalmisha with Establishing Eden. It has been a minute, but I am so excited to be back in front of you. Um, I have a lot of new stuff that God has given me, which is why I have not been here because it has been overwhelming. <laughs> Just figuring out how to execute a lot of these um, ideas and direction that God has given me. And um, honestly, I overwhelm myself because God gives us the vision um, and then we try to take the vision and go over in the corner and figure it out like it's a puzzle. But really, God gives us the vision so that we can continue to go to him and he provides direction as we lay that same vision that he's given us back before him because he watches over his, his words to keep it. Matthew 7, 7 tells us to, to ask, to seek, ask and knock. And so I have learned to lean into that. Anyways, I got some uh, um new stuff going on in my house I have kind of been moving and maneuvering and redecorating and making my space a sanctuary to my family and to myself um, in a way that uh, is not uh, where they can't be comfortable uh, but also in a way that when they see it um, the ambience the vibe the look exudes peace rest and promotes an atmosphere of um, being in communion with God. And so I want to bring y'all in to that. I've already done a lot of stuff um, and I'll go through and give you, I guess a, a, um, a preview one of these days. But today I got a new chair in for my prayer corner, um, which is, over here you can't really tell but that's where the chair is gonna go I got my chair in so I'm gonna let y'all watch me unbox this chair I've been wanting it for a long time I'm pretty sure if you if you are big on interior styling or interior design and decor like me you have seen this chair because it's kind of popping you've seen it inside outside and it is the da, 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 the egg chair and so I am doing it on the inside of my home. It's a, got a little spin on it. It's more of a reclined egg chair. But I'm going to put it in my prayer corner for when I get up early in the morning to pray, spend time with God, to just promote comfort. And also as a prayer agitator for my family so that they know they are welcome to it to sit and talk with God. I can kind of make it oily with the holy anointing with prayer as I sit in it and anoint my home so that my children can sit in it and hopefully have a contact with God. <laughs> Uh, in addition to the prayer that I promote inside of our home. So let's go. I really want to show y'all how hard-headed I am and why God is still dealing with me <laughs> because now what does this box say can you see it? it says do not open with knife and what am I opening this box with <laughs> I am opening this box with my handy dandy knife but hey I'm gonna be careful <laughs> So I thought that this was going to be a typical vlog and I was going to say minimal, but that's not what we do here at Establishing Eden. At Establishing Eden, we incorporate God into every aspect of our lives because we know that He is the source by which we are able to produce the fruit that becomes the fragrance and becomes the flavor of a world that we were called to multiply um, according to his presence his will and for his glory and of course today because I'm working on my prayer corner I want to talk about incorporating the place of prayer in our homes Cause this chair don't look like any size that can hold a 200 pound lady like myself. But we gonna see. So A and B are the bottom. 
now my perspective on prayer as with any thing that I come to you all with is straight from the Word of God because I believe that the Word of God is the foundation for a bountiful life and when I think about prayer I think about it from a few different aspects one of the aspects is Jesus's life right that's what we were called to take for an example where the Bible consistently talks about how he would go away to pray where he would withdraw or go to a certain place to pray and then I also think about the scripture I believe over in Deuteronomy where God um, is giving the children of Israel direction um, as he prepares them or as they've crossed over into the promised land and one of the things that he tells them is to talk about his goodness and talk about who he is to their children when they woke rise up when they go to bed when they lay down when they're out in the streets to make that a consistent part of the conversation I want to have a moment of honesty here um, a moment where we're not beating ourselves across the head not a moment of shame not a moment of condemnation possibly a moment of conviction whereby we are able to go forth and do better but definitely not a moment of um you know self-condemnation that's not what we're doing but just a moment of honesty how often do you pray and then how often do you pray consistently where the bible tells us that we to we ought to always pray without ceasing um, and so that means that we have a lifestyle of prayer, a lifestyle where we are in constant communication with God, a lifestyle where we are constantly asking God, seeking God and um, knocking so that we can go deeper in God. I, if being honest, which I want to be, I would say not as much as I like to. And um, I believe that the Praying without ceasing is a growth that starts when you steal away to pray consistently. When you wake up at 3 a.m. randomly and you think it's just for you to get a sip of water because you're thirsty, when really it's the Holy Spirit nudging you to come a little closer to him in the wee hours of the morning or 5 a.m. or whatever time that is that the Holy Spirit is nudging you. How often do we give in to say, okay, God, I hear you. I see what you're trying to do. And we go to pray. I believe that if we intentionally set a place to meet with God, that we will have more success in the creating of a habitual lifestyle of prayer. I know that prayer is the vantage point by which we allow God to enter into our world and our realm where we invite him here so that he can do his way have his will um, it is in him that we live and move and breathe and have our being and outside of him we can do nothing and i think that we know that and we quote that but do we really believe that because if we believe it as much as we say we do and trust me i'm preaching to myself here first we would not skip our prayer so much um, I think sometimes that we get caught up on how long the prayer is or how we are saying the words or the cadence of our speaking that we don't realize that God just wants to talk to us he just wants to hear from you as I stated before I know that the life of Jesus is the example that God left in his word as our 
mirror that who we should echo that you sh we should reflect and I believe that just oftentimes we for the sake of a better word I'm gonna say we um, not romanticize Jesus but we position him like completely outside of our own capabilities and while that is true in a sense because he is God in another sense it's not fully true because he was also man and the Bible says that he was tempted in the same ways that we are tempted and that he endured the same things that we endure and so that means that when Jesus was functioning here on earth as man even though he was God he was functioning in the sense that we are to or can function which is why he is the example which is why he is the standard because the word of God lets us know that we can do as Jesus did by the Spirit of God and so I noticed that Jesus was always coming in and out of prayer the Bible says even after he fed the multitude he went away into the mountain to pray it says he rose were early in the morning and left the house to pray and so I see that he was going to a particular place and that he had um, an attention when he got there and so I like to think of these areas in my home as prayer agitators when I see them they remind me girl you need to pray girl sit with God girl slow down we get so busy going and doing and moving that oftentimes we don't even realize that we're operating on zero and when we get overwhelmed or get exhausted or fatigued or even physically sick we like I don't know what happened I was doing so good but we don't realize that our lifeline was left way back behind somewhere and that's our prayer life the Bible tells us to always pray and not faint and so the antidote to not fainting the antidote to not giving up the antidote to not um, giving in to making it is prayer we have to do what we need to do to make sure that we are in conversation with our Heavenly Father he sent the Holy Spirit so that we could talk to him he sent Jesus so that we could know that we had the ability to get done what he requires for us to do all we have to do is want it and all we have to do is implement things that are necessary to push us forward to push us toward him now I'm not trying to talk like this is easy and I got it all figured out because it ain't and I don't but I do know that if we want to do it then God will help us do it we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us Did she try it or what? <laughs> Come up here trying to pep talk me, talking about mama, I see you working hard, only so she can try to hijack some of my items, some of my tools, and take it back with her. Girl, no ma'am. But anyways, back to prayer. Over and over in the Bible, during times of hardship, during times of praise, during times of joy, during times of calamity, of war, of worship, there's something 
consistent in how the children of God reach to God. They pray. They literally prayed. It says, and David prayed. And Jeremiah prayed. And Ezekiel prayed. You know, like they prayed. And the enemy wants us to get so wrapped up in everything but prayer. And prayer is enough. I think we need to accept that. Prayer is enough. Um, and when I say prayer is enough, I'm not talking about folding of the hands. I'm talking about making prayer the initial response because in prayer is where we will get the next response. So prayer is the initial response because when we go to pray is where God would give us what to do next and we don't have to be worrying about whether it's going to work or not because God never fails he never fails okay y'all okay so I'm a little irritated because I just did all of that hard work and I put one of the sides together wrong and um I knew that I put it wrong because the manual, when I finished putting it together and I tried to put the two pieces together, they didn't fit right. So I look back at the manual and the manual reveals that it doesn't look like what's on the picture. The picture and the item that I got don't match. <laughs> so I messed up somewhere. I messed up somewhere. The manual ain't wrong. I'm wrong. <laughs> so let me go back and figure out what's going on. So I was, so the manual shows me that A, okay, so A and B supposed to look like this when they're together. And this does, this is A and B, so each side looks like this. But it says that D and C is supposed to look like this when they get put together. Each side is supposed to have an opening. Well, mine has an opening at the top, and then there are no sides. So I messed up, so I gotta go back and make changes, which is really frustrating, but if I actually want to utilize my C and actually want it to, to work for me in the manner that it was created to work, then I have to uh, put it together in the way that it was supposed to be put together. But anyways, all right, y'all, let's keep going. Nope, that's not me, you're seeing correctly. That is my husband coming straight in from work saving me because I thought I was reading the manual correctly and clearly wasn't. <laughs> Alright y'all, this is the area that the seat is going in. I moved that table down and I'm putting it in this area. I'm going to move this somewhere else in my house. This is my Pilates arch. And Speaking of a manual, the Bible is our manual. God gave us that as a set of instructions so that we don't have to wonder um, how to move and what to do and how to be our best. And if we don't make a habit of looking into that word and following it step by step, we mess up like I just did and we find ourselves doing more than what we need to do due to lack of understanding due to undoing but thanks be to God that he is forgiving and righteous and ready to save us and so I invite you to join me in setting up prayer places in your home for you and your family to grow in God and to soar the potential of living in the optimum of what it means to be in the world and not of it, to be seated in heavenly places. This little corner in my home um, has already been a beautiful addition to not just the 
aesthetics, uh, but the spiritual aesthetics. Uh, my baby comes and sit in my lap as we pray. And um, I've always had a prayer closet, but it's hidden and it's easy to overlook that. It's easy to ignore it. But I walk past this place all day, every day. You can't ignore this big chair in the corner that I have designated to say pray, to say sit with God, to say talk to him, to say call on him. And so I invite you to do the same thing i'm gonna keep inviting you girl join me join me bring eden into your home bring the presence of god into your space bring the glory of god the anointing of god in your space where he is there is light where he is there is liberty where he is there is love where he is there is peace where he is there is joy where he is there is healing and so we have to receive these things and walk in them and believe that they are so because they are he is the spirit of truth and so i pray that when you see this big reveal that you are encouraged to go forth and establish a place in your home not just a place but an additional place in the public and in the open that prompts you to pray that prompts your family to pray and that prompts you to talk about god that prompts your children to ask you questions about what you say when you pray about what you're reading when you're sitting with god and what you're talking about and to be a reminder to talk about god when you rise and when you lay down and when you go in and when you come out and not just about him but also to talk to him that's the most important conversation of the day and um, i pray you enjoy this reveal and i look forward to hearing your comments below This is the final look, you guys. I absolutely love it. It's so serene and peaceful and the perfect place to talk to God. I hope that you were inspired in some way. And if you love God and are looking to incorporate Him in your everyday life, in your aesthetic, in your going, doing, your living, in your being, subscribe i love you guys be blessed